Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. It's a Real Estate Rundown. Today is December 12th, 2023. So I was just kind of reading through some of my social media scrolls here and um, I've noticed that a lot of folks that I know that are in the industry here have recently attended this uh, Information Management Network, the IMN. It's a uh, conference out of Phoenix that, that took place last weekend and it seems like a lot of folks were in attendance and this is where a lot of the big single family rental corporations go and talk a little bit about their trade and and talk shop with other folks and do a little bit of networking and and so i'm sure it's uh you know as with any any business trade conference i'm sure there's a lot of activity a lot of things to learn and a lot of things to do and people to see and people to talk to lots of good networking going on there so um it just kind of got me uh interested because i noticed a lot of folks were in attendance saying what a great time they had great conversations they had with other folks and it, it reminded me of a recent headline that i saw and uh, I thought, well, I can use this and kind of tie it all together here. So the, um, the, the recent headline that I saw was the real villains of today's housing market. So <laughs> which kind of begs the question, you know, who is the real villain? Is there really a villain in today's housing market? I mean, could it be interest rates? Could it be high prices? Is that the villain? Could it be the single family rental corporations? Are they the villains? Well, this particular article here um, starts off a couple of years ago and the writer says, I met the villains of America's housing market a couple of years ago, and it wasn't in some ivory tower or private island. Instead, it was a gathering of the, uh, the uh, it was a gathering of the country's most reviled home buyers. And it took place in a reasonably plush hotel in the desert near Phoenix. Now, I, I'm not sure uh, where this conference was held two years ago, but there's several conferences that happen throughout the year. So I'm not sure which conference uh, this fellow went to, but uh, seems that uh, he, he doesn't really have much of a, of a liking for these uh, SFR companies. Uh, the attendees were employees, uh, employees and representatives of the single family rental companies, uh, single family rental companies being a relatively new constellation or collection of private equity firms that some of which have gone public, like uh, BlackRock and some of these other ones. Um, and so really, these companies, what they do is they buy a lot of houses. They buy a lot of houses every year. And there's a lot of these companies out there. I mean, there's a, there's a list uh, this long here. It's, it's a pretty long list. There's a couple of dozen big companies out there. And that's their primary function is to buy single family rental properties and rent them out. And when the time comes, they will dispose of the properties when it makes sense in the, the, the numbers. Um, sometimes they'll hold these properties for years and years and years and then decide, okay, well, here's a subset of homes. Let's go ahead and offload these homes and reposition our cash so that we can buy homes again in the next year when we really feel like prices are going to be dipping a little bit. And that's kind of where we're at with this right now is a lot of these companies are looking at 2024 thinking, <laughs> it's funny, they looked at 2023 the same way. Uh, really thinking that they were going to be able to go into the year, um, whether it be 23 or 24. Uh, they're always looking ahead to the new year thinking, okay, well, we can buy us a fresh uh, crop of homes, uh, get these things rented out, boost our portfolio a little bit, and uh, take these things under rental management. And so this is kind of what they do. It's just a, a primary function of what they do is just renting these homes. They, um, they, they do provide a, a good quality product in most cases. I know companies like uh, Progress Residential, Main Street Renewal, and some of these other large holders of real estate, they do a good job of taking care of their properties. Uh, they've got good tenant relations, uh, good maintenance on these properties, and usually they 
uh, they will rent them out for top dollar as well. So, uh, but they are buying up a lot of homes and there is a certain contingency of folks out there that believe that these folks are buying so many homes that it's it's contributing to the low levels of inventory and it's 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 cheating consumers out of the opportunity to get into home ownership well that could be true to a certain degree but can't really see that um that, that that it's having that big of an impact on the market i mean these sfr companies really make up less than 10% of the home sales every year. So, you know, are they truly scooping up all of the inventory and making it impossible for a first time home buyer to find a home for themselves? It's hard to say, um, but that's what a lot of people think. You know, meanwhile, um, in these, these big corporations, they continue to scoop up houses, um, continue to build their equity, and um, and then, you know, occasionally, like this year, we've seen some of these companies actually put properties back on the market for sale. So they are, in effect, turning homes. And so when they buy these houses, yeah, they, they may be buying houses that first time home buyers may find attractive and get into, but they're the ones that got there first. When you put a house out on the open market like that, it's usually first come, first serve, right? Or you know, best offer. Um, and so a lot of times these companies, when they buy these houses, they are putting in strong offers. They're all cash offers. They're very attractive to a lot of sellers because yeah, while they may have an inspection and uh, go through a, a, uh, a typical routine of, of uh, home buying in terms of having the inspection and, and then maybe going back to the seller for additional concessions after the inspection uh it's it's still a very easy transaction for most sellers and when the offer is typically pretty strong to begin with and a seller finds it attractive and there's no appraisal contingency there's no mortgage contingency and generally closing can happen in 20 to 30 days so for a lot of sellers it's a pretty good deal to be able to sell their home to one of these big corporations that are going to just turn around and, and rent it out to somebody for a few years. On the flip side of the coin though, again, some of these big corporations, once they have rented a house and held a property for a certain amount of time, they will every year, they'll look at their inventory and go, okay, what can we, what can we sell this year and reposition our cash so that we can buy some more homes next year? And uh and so that's that's typical routine for these folks. They'll put houses up for sale as well, but you don't hear much about that. Now, the houses that they put up for sale, again, they're gonna put up clean, move-in ready type of homes. And these are homes that are typically priced such that first time home buyers and entry level buyers will find them attractive. And so while they may be scooping up houses on one side, they're also putting new product out on the back side, uh, on the other side over here. And, and so, you know, really, while this particular author of this article claims that these folks are literally just buying all the houses and they have deep pockets and they're crowding Americans out of the marketplace. Well, again, when, yeah, that may be happening when some buyers are looking for a home for sale, but I can almost guarantee you that when these home buyers go and look for homes for sale, some of the homes in their list are going to be offered for sale by these very same companies who are scooping up other houses. So, um, you know, to say that these folks are really the villains in the, um, in the housing market. Yeah. I'm not so sure I really buy into that. Um, there was, um, another, <laughs> there's another subset of folks that, that also tend to believe that these single family rental companies are, the villains in the marketplace because there was a a new bill proposed in the legislature up in uh up in washington and uh it says here um a new bill proposes kicking wall street investors out of the u.s housing market but would it improve affordability that's a good question would it improve affordability 
it's hard to say until you really kind of get into that. But um, these uh, these lawmakers, um, many of which it appears are on the blue team, uh, introduced a bill that would force the institutional buyers to sell off their homes over a 10 year period. That could be kind of dangerous. Um, if you're asking these folks to sell tens of thousands of homes over the next 10 years, um, it, it could flood the market with properties and suddenly push the supply and demand factor in another direction. It could swing the pendulum the other way. Uh, we all know that right now over the last uh, couple of years, it's, it has been tough to buy houses because number one, prices have been going up like crazy. Uh, back in the pandemic days, which are gone now, in case anybody uh, didn't know, the pandemic is gone, and so is pandemic real estate. So get over that one. But, you know, during that that time period in 2020, 2021, uh, we did see housing prices really kind of go through the roof. Uh, inventory was low because nobody really wanted to move while there was a pandemic. And everybody wanted to find a home where they could locked down, right? And so it pushed a lot of people out to buy houses. Uh, bidding wars ensued. Prices went through the roof and the market was absolutely crazy, right? Um, people were buying homes and, and paying way over list price. And then suddenly uh, that all came to a screeching halt in, what was it, 2022, I guess, when uh, interest rates started going up. So interest rate, that's a whole other story. Um, while the interest rates did have an effect on the market and you're still having an effect on the market matter of fact this year uh home sales are down um uh, is, is, is at the lowest levels in in many many years there's there's a lot of data to back that up and uh someday when i get an editor for my videos we'll be able to throw up some good graphics for you and and show you some of the data that we're leaning on when we um when we give you this information so um back to this uh this proposed bill um, I mean, the, the bill aims not only to ban hedge funds from amassing large portfolios of single family homes, but also forces them to sell off their portfolios. Um, ah, it, it says uh, the bill would require hedge funds to sell at least 10% of the total number of their homes they currently own per year over a 10 year period. So they're looking to get these companies, these, these Wall Street backed companies out of the single family housing market. You know, um, this all started to evolve probably around 2010 to 2012 at the end, towards the end of the last recession that we had. Um, these companies started to come around and, and uh, they, they originally started off buying homes. And I know this because I was helping them buy homes back at that time. And I had listings that I was selling to them. And... Um, they were actually going out to the foreclosure sales because there was still back at that time in 2010, 2011, still a ton of foreclosures happening across the country. And so these single family rental companies would would go into these um, uh, uh, foreclosure sales and actually buy a ton of homes right there uh, on the courthouse steps, as they say. And so that. Uh, was sort of the beginning. They started amassing their inventories and they really didn't know what they were doing at first. They were just buying these homes at the foreclosure sale and oftentimes had to go and evict the former mortgagors and then do repairs on the property. And so a lot of times they really didn't know what they were getting into uh, in the early days, but they went ahead with these cash purchases. Their, their mission was to buy houses because they saw an opportunity over the next few years that with with housing prices so low at that time, that point in time, that the only place for these housing prices to go was up over the next 10 years. And that's exactly what happened. So these these smart folks, they they rolled the dice and and um, and it worked well for them. And so now they they've uh, over the course of the years, they've continued to purchase homes and they they buy more homes every year buy more homes every year and then after about four or five years you started to see some of them sort of what i call trading out their inventory again they, they put some of their older inventory back on the market recoup some of their equity that they built up and then they go out and search for more properties to purchase and um and so 
as as um as the market ebbs and flows and goes up and down, so does the activity of these uh, single family rental investors. And over the course of the last, I don't know, t- couple of years since the pandemic started, um, started started going away, uh, these investors got more serious about buying houses. They don't really worry about interest rates, right? Because because they're they're buying with um, with with big cash. They they've accumulated lots of lots of cash and, and equity, and um, and that's how they position themselves in these marketplaces to buy these homes. It's just come straight in with cash. You don't have to worry about their cost of money, really. And um, uh, and, and so, yeah, it's it's um it, it's it's kind of interesting to see how how this is playing out. Um, this this bill, I, I personally, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. It just doesn't make a lot of sense uh to have a bill like this uh, come into law i mean we'll see how it goes but um i i can't see that this is really going to gain a lot of traction here um and, and i think again while their intent is good and that is to provide more inventory for consumers um you know that that's that's a good train of thought right i mean uh we all want uh, first-time buyers and and um entry level buyers to have an opportunity to get into home ownership because truly that's where families are able to build their wealth by buying a home and and utilizing it for their their residence over the course of time where they can build up some equity and eventually you know pay down their mortgage and create that equity position that allows them later on in life to uh, sell off and, and move up to a bigger house or retire, whatever the case may be. Um, but I, I, I do think that this bill is going to gain a lot of traction. This uh, this article about the villains, uh, while it's a, a very colorful article, I, I don't actually believe that these folks are the villains. They've been doing this sort of stuff for quite some time now and have really become part of the housing market ecosystem, if you will. So um, I, I think if you were to suddenly pull these big investors out of the marketplace, uh, we, we would we would have a, a drastically different market. Uh, since would sellers be able to sell to all cash buyers? I mean, would there be as many cash buyers out there who are willing to pay um, in 90 and 95% of full retail value for these properties? I, I don't know. Um, remains to be seen, but anyway, uh, that was a topic I really wanted to cover today. I thought it was really interesting. Um, you know, the big conference, I guess it, it went off really well. A lot of these folks seem to have had fun out there. And, um, and then you get these, uh, the other side of the, the coin where, where folks are not real happy with these big corporations, but clearly these big corporations, they, they know what they're doing. They're, uh, they're doing it pretty well. And they are providing a lot of Americans with a place to live in terms of, uh, you know, single family rentals. So it's not such a bad thing to have these folks as part of our ecosystem. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're good to work with. I still sell a lot of houses to them. Sold one uh, last month to uh, one of the big single family rental investors. And so, um, you know, it's always good to have those kind of buyers who you call upon and say, hey, I've got this house. It's at the right price. Do you want it? Sure. Thanks. Okay. So, uh, well, that's about all we have for today. Hopefully you found this uh, interesting, if not informative. So, um, yeah, please give us a thumbs up. uh, Hit our subscribe button. We're trying to build our channel up. Like I said, um, looking to hire a video editor pretty soon. So, hopefully our videos will be a little more visually entertaining for you. We'll have some some graphics and some data and some charts that we can share um, and maybe even some other uh, uh, colorful pieces to our, our video to delight you. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and we will see you next time. This is Real Estate Rundown and we're out here on December 12th. Thanks. Bye-bye.